So welcome back. This is episode two. As promised, we are going to continue our American football journeyman save with Bullbound College Football today. We will pick up where we left off. I just kind of wanted to welcome you guys back. You are back for the second episode. Thank you for coming back. Uh, please hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. You have daily uploads here on the channel with Football Manager, and then you will have uh, periodic uploads of this save. Also currently doing them airport as well. Thank you so much for dropping by. Let's roll the intro. We'll get into it. Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. Episode two of Bullbound College Football. Uh, you can see I've changed my background and I cannot resize the game window. This is just what it is. So this is how it will be. What I will try to do is put up a picture of whatever stadium uh, we are currently playing in uh, based on the school we are at, which is right now we have taken the Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns job, my alma mater, a 30 prestige team, and this is the home stand uh, at Cajun Field, 31,000 people strong. Well, it holds 31,000 people. It may have seen 31,000 people once or twice. I know I was there for one sellout game where we beat uh, Texas A&M, uh, but Typically, that's that's a pretty big crowd, uh, and that's the home stand. Visitors are on the side that we're at here, and uh, if you ever go, they could have changed the menu because it's been a long time since I lived at home. But uh, up at the concession stands, right up here, they had some great sausage po' boys. Very very good. Highly recommend them if they still have them. All right, well, let's get into it. So, um, again, this is this episode, I'm going to try to limit this one to 30 minutes. And it may take us several videos, but this first season, I'm really wanting to kind of introduce you guys to the game. I know I have a lot of international guys that are, you know, subscribers to my channel. So I want to be able to expose them to this game as well. Uh, as always, if you have any questions about American football, either the professional ranks or the collegiate ranks. Most of the rules are very similar. Some have, you know, the ones that aren't exactly the same. There's just a minutia of difference, uh, but the general stuff is all the same. So, uh, again, just also a reminder, Bowlbound does not have the ability to play out the games, to watch the games like we do on Football Manager with the 2D or 3D engine. So all we're going to be able to do is send the games out, look at the results, and kind of analyze the statistics. And um, so we'll make, we'll make do with that, and it'll be the best it can be. So we're picking up in week three of training camp. We have progressed down through training camp into week three. As I mentioned last episode, we are going to look at the first game to on how to schedule and then after that we're going to get into you know i'm going to do the rest of the scheduling off camera just to save us some time so again we're in a new week we got an email notification we have our new checklist which you hit by view stage details it's also the default screen that you will go to uh, anytime you advance so we're going to check emails the bullbound team non-conference schedule setting a good schedule is important so remember last episode your goal in the game needs to be twofold one win six games that's it six six games get you eligible for a bowl game if you win your bowl game you will see a prestige increase prestige does not increase fast just like you don't see you know barcelona you're not going to you're not going to finish 3rd or 4th in the league every year and then all of a sudden be one of the worst teams in Spain, right? Uh you'll still, you know, you'll still be considered one of the premier clubs. 
very similar here. At USL, at, at Louisiana Lafayette, I could win 10 to 12 games every year for 10 years, and Prestige probably won't get over 45 to 50 at a max, which means we'd still be a below average school, right? Right now we're a low average, a low school. So it's not, you know, you aren't, you aren't going to gain pr tons of prestige just by winning games. So that's why we're doing a journeyman. The goal is, is to just continue to develop when you win six games, make a bowl game, hopefully win your bowl game, and then compete to win your conference or your league uh, for, for those of you international guys. Uh, and I will try to give some football manager context because football manager is the main game on my channel. I know a lot of you guys that are going to be watching this play football manager and may not know much about American football. So I want to kind of draw, you know, draw some parallels to help you at least try to understand. Again, any questions? Hit me up in the comments and I will do my best to explain. All right, so I'm going to delete that email. It's told us to set a schedule and request non conference opponents. Now, I mentioned it last episode, but since we're in scheduling, you have 15 weeks to play your games. You can only schedule a maximum of 12, you can schedule a minimum of 11. Now, you do have the option to set scheduling to be to yes, which means your athletic director, your director of football, if you will, uh, he will be the one controlling your scheduling. Now, scheduling is very much like doing a friendly in football manager. Just because you ask somebody to play the game doesn't mean that they will play it. Uh, and there are a lot of factors that will go into that. So let's jump back in here. So the open weeks are the weeks that you can choose to play somebody. And if we click on week one, you see the little arrow there by it. If we click on week two, the arrow changes. And you'll notice the possible opponents change as well. Some weeks you might see the same team. So like week one, we see Akron, Alabama, Birmingham. Week two, Akron and Alabama, Birmingham are there. Same in week three. So they're gonna they're a team that we've got several weeks we could try to do them. Now the other thing, you see the rank. Well, our rank is we actually don't have a ranking right now. Uh, but your ranking, so number five, they are the fifth best team in the country. They would be very, very difficult to beat. Uh, this would be like um Loki Doki's Basing Stoke Town beating Barcelona. Just not going to happen. Um, now, somebody's going to throw out Appalachian State and Michigan. I get it. <laughs> but Appalachian State was a, uh, a League Two side, a championship team, if you will, beating a premier team. That happens in the FA Cup and, and the Euros all the time, you know, or at least regularly. So, you know. From a European football standpoint, that's not very rare. In American football, very rare. So we want to, you know, we are a low team. We know that we're that's red. So we really want to be finding somebody in the reds or the oranges. Now the we will have the opportunity to get a bigger prestige bump if we do beat some higher teams but they're going to be hard to win. And remember, the goal is six games. But we're expected to win the league. So luckily, standings are broken down into your conference and your overall. The six games to be bowl eligible is from your overall record. Your Whoever wins the conference or the league is only based on the league. So in football manager terms, if you're playing the Premier League, only your games in the Premier League are going to count in winning the league. Even if Tottenham and Chelsea play in the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup and Champions League or Euro Cup, they could play three times in those cup matches, but 
those three games mean nothing when it comes to the, the Premier League table. Same concept. So I hope that helps you guys understand that a little bit. So we've got Florida International, Middle Tennessee, Troy, Arkansas State, North Texas, Florida Atlantic, Louisiana, Monroe. That's our conference games. You also want to use your open weeks wisely. We can only schedule 12 games maximum. If you've got to win six, 12 games gives you one more game to get a sixth win. You only have to win half of your games. Then if you only play 11 games, then you've got to win like 57 or 58% of your games. And I don't do math, so that may be off a little bit. But close, you guys get the point. So there's no reason not to schedule 12. We've already got this game for whatever reason uh, against Miami. They're the number 11 team in the country. All right, they're, they're going to crush us. Now, you also get a slight bonus to Prestige if you beat your rival. Louisiana Monroe is our rival. I kind of take the rule of thumb not to play a game the week before your rivalry game. But I don't control the week of these conference or league games. Those are hard-coded in. Now, Florida Atlantic may be week five next year. Middle Tennessee may be week 12. Florida Atlantic may be week six. Those can change around. You don't control that. So what you control is the what we call an out-of-conference game. So we can't schedule the same team twice. You cannot do that. And you cannot schedule conference opponents as an out-of-conference game. So some leagues are so big that you may not play every team in your specific league every year. But you can't play, you can't schedule a game against that team. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, well, I was going to sort by rank. I guess we're not. But I, I like to balance my off weeks, my open weeks. That gives you a little time to recover from injuries. So I don't like a big run of games. So I'm going to probably leave either, I'm either going to leave week three or week five open. So I'll play two and then one off. Then I'll have six and then I'll take week 10 off. Then I'll have 11, 12, 13, 14, and then week 15 open. I always like week 15 open because week 16 is if you win your league, if you have two divisions in your league, then you play a conference championship game, which you have to win that to possibly make the playoffs. So you kind of want a, a week off to get healthy for that. Otherwise, you also go into your bowl games starting week 16. Now, you only play one bowl game, and depending on the prestige of the bowl game determines on what week that takes place. So a club like ours would play like the New Orleans Bowl or something to that, the Independence Bowl, something to that effect. It's going to take place in week set week 18. Week 17 is an off week uh, for practice and travel. So let's go into week one. We'll show you how to schedule a game. I'm going to just kind of scroll down. All right, there's Toledo. Now, the other thing I like to do, you can schedule a home game or an away game. I like to balance that. You can do a home and home. If you play them at home this year, then you'll play them on the road next year. Now, your conference games are always evenly split. So right now, we have four at games, which is away. We're going to be at their stadium and four non-ats, which is a home game. So we have four and four, and we have eight total games. So I want four more games, two at home, two on the road. And I don't like to play multiple weeks in a row on the road if I can help it. So let's start at week 11. I know I follow up with two road games. So week 11, make sure the little check marks there off to the left of the word open, which it is. We're going to scroll down here and let's look at Kent State and we're going to request a home game. Now the little asterisk is a proposed game. They haven't accepted yet. Okay. 
That's how you schedule a game. So we're going to come up here and we're going to look at Ball State. We'll open with an away game. Then I'm going to want Central Michigan at home. And let's go ahead and play another home game, University of Ohio. Take week five off. And and we'll look at Toledo as an away game. Oh, and there you go. I've already asked for 12. So there's our 12 games. So we're going to go back to the main page and we're going to advance the week. All right, we've got four emails for schools that we offered games to. We accept, we decline, we accept, we accept. So who declined? The Ohio Bobcats. That's okay. You have three weeks to get this done. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete those. Now when we come in, you see we have 11 games. Eight we started with. The three that just got accepted. And it was that week three game that let us down. And one, two... Four, five. So we can do an away game that week. So let's look at Akron. Quest an away game there. We only have one game left, so we've asked for that. We'll advance that week. Got the email. And they accepted. So there is our final schedule. Now we can go in here and look, but we've got 12 games scheduled. Nothing else for us to do. Now we can clear a game. One of the games that we've done, we can clear it out. But we're, we're good, so we're going to advance the following week to finish scheduling. We didn't have anything to do. An easy week. Back to the new page, training camp. Check email. So here's where the, you always have to look at these emails, guys, because this gives you your potential transfer risks. We feel you have no significant transfer risks for this season. Basically, if you redshirt someone, remember we talked about who's going to transfer. Typically, it's really good players. Well, we don't have any of those. Freshmen and sophomores that don't get a lot of playing time. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? This is telling us, who those risks are. We don't have any. If we had a higher level team, you might have a list of 20 players on here. All right? So we're going to close that and then choose players to redshirt. Use, using red shirts to develop players is a key component to leading a successful program. Red shirts allow, like we talked about last episode, that extra year to train and develop without costing one of his four years of eligibility they can't play in games but if there's an injury and you have a lack of players had to wet the whistle there guys you can remove a red shirt but even if you remove the red shirt just for one game you lose it permanently he's already had the red shirt you can't use it again you can only red shirt a player one time and you know so you want to be very very cautious on who you red shirt and you want to be even more cautious about removing a red shirt sometimes it would be better if you know that hey i've got a you know i've got an injury here but one or two of these injured players at that position are going to be back in one week or two weeks well if one of those weeks is an open week you don't need any players because you're not playing and maybe you play a guard at tackle or a tackle at center. And, you know, just kind of, you know, just like in a, in a real game. You know, if you've used all your subs in football manager and your goalkeeper gets a red card, can't bring on another goalkeeper. You're going to have to take a center back or a striker or somebody and put them in the, put them in the number one shirt and have them wear the, wear the goalie gloves and step in between the sticks, right? Same concept. So you can play players out of position. But now we've already done that. But we'll go back and just double check. Make sure there's nobody else. So 
The easiest way to do this, I find, is to use this menu to sort out and just kind of make sure. So we we know we've redshirted that quarterback. And you know, we we've already got is there anybody here? What I may want to do, now I don't typically want to redshirt a junior. The other thing, here's something to think about. You know how I was cutting some players last episode? The reason you would cut them, so players, the, 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 the players in the game are not dumb. If, a, if you want to, if you go to recruit a wide receiver next season, He's going to look at my roster and he's going to go, you've got six guys already on your team. I don't have a chance to play. What it doesn't look at, is he going to be the best player on your team? He might be, and you might know that, but the game's not going to recognize it. He's going to just look at the sheer number. So I know we're losing one senior. Everybody else is hopefully going to get a little better, but I've got this junior here, right? Now, something to look at. I've got two players with GPAs in the ones. So I don't know how GPAs work at university in other countries. I have no idea. And I've been out of school for so long, I'm not even sure how it works here, to be honest with you. But in the game, a one, a one is a D, a two is a C, a three is a B, and a four is an A. So 4.0 is a perfect A plus, 100%. 1.0, okay? Anything below a 2 and your player gets suspended. Remember, we talked about that last episode. So I have two players that could be suspended. And that would leave me with five, four, four receivers. Now, if I got rid of the junior, then I only have three. So I do run the risk of not having enough depth if, if there's a suspension. But on the flip side, by having him, I do run the risk he will be a senior next year. I run the risk of a good, a better receiver that I could recruit as a freshman not coming because I have too many receivers. So I'm going to cut this guy. I am, I'm willing. I'm a bad team. I'm, or I'm, oh, but I can't do that. I could cut him and take the red shirt off the freshman. Um, you know what? I'm going to do that. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. So I'm going to keep him there. All right. Well, I already know. I've redshirted everybody that I could. We looked at that. If you want to see that again, go back to episode one, and you can see us go through the roster, uh, taking a look at the depth charts. We want to just double check that we're at least three deep at every position. Now, you only need one. I've never seen anybody get hurt on special teams. Knock on wood. Uh, that's why they don't have a depth chart here. So I think we're good. So, yep, we're going to advance that stage. But that's the last point. You can assign red shirts. And is there one other thing that we could do? Yes, we can change positions. This is important when you're changing positions. Want to change between similar style positions. But let's take a look here at just for example, our quarterbacks. So we've got this freshman, right? So let's open, let's click on him, click on change position. So we've got this guy, uh, let's look at S. Johnson because he's a better player, better potential, right? So we kind of looked at this. So this is kind of your star rating in football manager. So you have your current rating and your potential rating. Remember your potential rating has the stars, that are white but aren't filled in yet, right? So the white part here is where he's currently at, and this gray area is where he could get to all things being perfect. So he might get a little better. He might get all the way up there, but that's still going to be well below average, right? It's going to be below average. 
about a 2.5 on a five scale, okay? So we're gonna close him, but we are gonna click on him. So the arrow's there on his name. We're gonna change his position and it should come up as Scott Robinson, S. Robinson. So he's currently 232, target weight is 241. The closer they get to that target rate, weight is going to determine where they get on their potential scale, how much they're going to develop. So you want to do weight training in the off season as one factor. All right. When we do training, we'll talk about that more. But now here's what we can do. We can change position. Right. Now, once I hit change position, it should give me, I think it does. It, do, it should give me a, a warning. Are you sure you want to do this? But we don't, but you notice the the position is highlighted. So right now, it tells us that his current ability, if we switched him to quarterback, would be poor, and his future ability would be poor. So what you want to do is you kind of want to go through here and see if there is anything that really stands out. So he could be an average running back. Now here's the problem. 225 is his target, his max target weight. He's already 232, which means he would bust. Anytime you go over your max target weight, the player will never get better. And that's why sometimes you'll see a player is, say, a one out of five, and three years later, he's still a one out of five. He just never develops. A lot of times, that's why. So, even though you go, oh, he could be average, which is better than he is now, this guy wouldn't pan out. So let's keep looking. Here's an average that could go up to 240, which is pretty close. So he could change to fullback. Oh, by the way, if you're new to the channel because of this save, I record in my living room. I have 11 cats, two dogs, two lizards, uh, three kids, one grandbaby, and one future son-in-law living in the house it gets loud sometimes they do try to keep the talking to the minimum you don't watch tv while i record but you may hear somebody talking they hear dogs barking they hear cats fighting or crying just part of the zoo here you get it live and raw <laughs> uh so again 230 on a receiver 245 for a tight end he could change there but I'm looking, he's still going to be poor. And so we just kind of scroll through all the positions. Now, he's an inside linebacker. The direct counter to that is an outside linebacker. You know, so you can, you know, here, here's where that normally comes into play. I'm not going to change his position, so I'm going to cancel. But let's say you're recruiting one year and you go, man, I really need an outside linebacker. But you can't find any that are interested in signing with you or nobody that you really want but there's this inside linebacker you go boy he's really good but i don't have a spot for him at that position that's a guy that you sign and then change his position from inside to outside linebacker so you have to kind of get to know what positions go to what position as far as a transfer and you know and that's another recruiting thing that you could do. So, like, same thing. We're going to look at this corner. Cornerback is a defensive position. Their job is to cover the wide receivers who go out for passes and try to stop the other team from completing passes. Very important position. Very hard to play as well. Now, look at this. He could be a good wide receiver only going to be an average corner at a three because remember it's on a five star scale good should be somewhere up in the four rating that's interesting right, you see here he can move to a free safety he would be below average which is orange so he would actually get better currently and have a better upside. Okay. Now that's a 190. 
I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, he's still here. You see he appears as a free safety, but he changed from red to orange. Now, if we switch positions either place and come back, now he's gone. Okay, now let's look at our safeties. So now we have four free safeties, including Scott Ortiz, who now is better backup. Let's look at Scott. See, maybe he can change and be a cornerback. And he can't. Or below average. Right, we could look at uh, Mitchell. Remember, changing somebody that's a junior or a senior doesn't hurt you because they're pretty close to being maxed out already, right? So they may actually be a better alternative than somebody you have on your roster. I'm just kind of going through here. And, you know, this takes a little while to kind of look at. Nobody else. Can. But that was an interesting move. So Ortiz now becomes my number two free safety. <clears throat> and now I have a pretty good free safety crew. The other thing I could do there is if I go to, now I can jump out, I can go to my depth chart. That's a defensive position. And Ortiz actually would now be my starter at that position. So I just upgraded one of my positions by changing the guy's position. So that was good. That was actually a good thing. Now, when you go into your training in the offseason, uh, there is a category called, I can't remember right off the top of my head, um, adaptability. If you put point, I don't usually put points in there unless it's a guy that I know I'm going to try and change to a new position. That adaptability means he actually practices in the training window for other positions and gives him a better chance at converting with some upside. So we got lucky there. I don't change a lot of players, but I've explained a couple of reasons why you could or might want to. All right, let's advance that and advance to the regular season. Takes just a few seconds to do that. All right, now you can see all this has changed. Now we've got a whole, you know, we've gone from camp to season. I can go back and look at camp. Now we're in the season. We'll pick up here next episode uh, because this is going to be where the games start. And again, first episode, we'll probably spend a little more time in depth going into this one game and looking at everything in here and how to set things up. Um, there's going to be some things I won't give you because I am in an online league, and some things are proprietary that I've discovered over 16 years of playing the game. So I can't give away all my secrets, but I've already told you a lot, and I actually have some tutorial videos out there uh, on the channel that you can go back, and I give a lot of good information. So... If you really want to dive into the game and learn a little bit more, go back and check out my tutorial series. It's several episodes long. We go into detail on every single screen. Uh, but on this, I really want to get to the games. But still, because it's the first season, we will take a little bit of time. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like and want to see more of this. Subscribe if you're new. And hey, we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.